views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, I'd like to welcome everyone to our first show of December, and I'd like to start the show off uh, to remind everyone that if you are looking for holiday gifts, uh, perfect enlightened holiday gifts, inspirational enlightening gifts for all ages, my uh, inspirational books are on my website, um, One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, which is, by the way, the sequel to One True Home, and my channel book, Angel of Faith. And the, this is the lovely cover of it. Um, it helps us to reconnect with our eternal natures because it's based on my two near-death experiences, and it helps us to remember that we're divine and that we live on forever. In a conversation I had with a publisher, um, they said that in a focus group of women who had read my book, uh, some said it lifted my soul after reading Angels of Faith. Isn't that lovely? And another person said, while reading it, I felt as if my soul was being cleared and I felt closer to God. Now, it, that, the, one of the reasons for that is that the book is written with the angelic energies of light. Angels of Faith touches the soul of both the young and the young at heart, and many are, around the world have felt a shift in their hearts as the book helps them align with their own divinity. To order my beautiful books for yourself, for loved ones, friends, please go to the Angel Healing House website, which is angelhealinghouse.com, or you can always go on Amazon. And now that we're in December, which many uh, call the season of miracles, the Posse of Angels wanted to speak about the miracle of this book, the miracle of angels of faith. You know, everyone, with the last of the leftovers eaten and Thanksgiving now fading into a dim memory, 
it seems like the official season of holidays is underway. The usual decor in the shops is now resplendent with the colors of red and green, enticing shoppers to get excited about the must-have gifts for themselves or their loved ones. You know, I was in one shop and I was buying a candle and I was trying to decide whether I wanted my house to smell like vanilla snow or spiced pumpkin. And I heard a sales girl pitching to a customer to buy the must-have scent of the season, which she said was the fresh scent of holiday cucumber, as it would bring a refreshing and crisp atmosphere to her holiday gatherings. I don't know about you listeners, but the last time I checked, cucumbers don't have much smell, be they the regular kind or the holiday variety. And whether we choose to celebrate anything at this time of year, it is uncanny how many traditions and stories from different cultures that contain references to miracles. And it is this theme of miracles that the Posse of Angels wants us to consider when they ask us, what is a miracle? And why couldn't miracles be a daily occurrence? You know, everyone, the dictionary definition of miracle is a surprising and welcome event that is not easily explained by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. Whether this supernatural intervention occurs to human beings and when it does, it is so life-altering that for those whose lives have been touched by this divine intervention, we truly are never the same again. One of the greatest miracles that ever happened to me was in the area of writing my books. And it came as a result of a message from a tiny bird. And if I was not open, and if I was not clear enough in my heart to hear the voice of God speaking to me through this little bird, I would not have received such an enormous gift and blessing in my life. You know, everyone, after reconnecting to my divine eternal nature in 2003, after my angelic walk-in experience, I was able to see, to hear, and communicate with my angelic family who are the posse of angels. With this angelic connection, I became an open channel to bring forth information from God. It didn't matter what time of day it was. I didn't have to quiet myself down as whenever I sat down to write or speak, messages would channel through me and flow with ease and with grace. On one particular morning, I was surprised as my eyes popped open at 5.30 a.m. Now, this was very unusual for me, as getting up early for me is usually around 7 a.m. As I say to people, there is only one 5.30, it's 5.30 p.m. I turned on my computer getting up that early, fixed myself a cup of tea, and decided that I would continue bringing forth a book that I was working on. As I put my fingers on the keys, nothing came out. Perplexed, I took a couple of deep breaths, repositioned my hands, and still nothing happened. This was very odd, as every other time I wrote with total uninterrupted ease. All of a sudden, the sound of a shrieking bird split the morning silence. The energy behind the bird's shriek was one of urgency and desperation. As I listened to the bird, I began to receive a series of tingles and shivers that went up and down my body. I immediately knew that this was no ordinary bird and that I needed to stop what I was doing and to go and investigate. The noise drew me to our bathroom window. And when I looked out, I saw that a tiny bird had built its nest in, <clears throat> in our disused clothesline. 
right outside of the window, and the bird was sitting on the nest. When the bird saw me, it locked eyes with me and frantically turned its head from side to side. It was chirping up a storm. He hardly drew breath as he seemed possessed to tell me something really important. After about five minutes, the bird completely stopped, tilted his head to one side, and he just stared at me. I thought, what a strange experience, and I was glad for the renewed silence so that I could go back and I could concentrate on writing the book that I was writing. But you know what? When I sat down and I repositioned my fingers on the keyboard, my fingers began to type a very new, different story to the one I had been previously working on. After about 30 minutes of writing, my fingers came to a halt. And as I read this enchanting, new, beautiful story for the first time, tears ran down my cheeks. The little bird wanted me to write my book, Angels of Faith, to help others reconnect to their own divine eternal natures and to remind us all of where we come from and the journey back home that we all get to take. You know, since launching this enchanting book, it has been a magnet for people to connect with me and to the work that I do. The channeled messages, messages and the angelic tone in the book touches people's hearts. And no matter where they are in the world, many of the readers seem to be experiencing the same magic. For instance, shortly after launching the book, I heard from a client who ordered it in Australia. She told me that she loved the book so much, but that when she first read it, something strange had happened to her. She said that when she got three quarters of the way through the book, her eyes started to well up with tears and she began to remember something that she had forgotten long ago. I said to her, what a beautiful response. Could I, I, I use a testimonial? It was four days later. I heard from a client in Santa Barbara, California, that had ordered four copies of the book for both family and friends. He congratulated me and said he had to tell me about his experience. He said that when he read the story, he got three quarters of the way through the book when he started to cry as he remembered something that he had forgotten long, long ago. I was incredulous as he spoke almost the exact same words that the client in Australia had uttered just days before. It was four days later that I heard from a gentleman in Virginia who worked at an old age home who had bought several copies of the book for the residents to read. Thanking me for writing such a beautiful book, he said that with so many residents either terminally ill and crossing over, that the book gave them and their loved ones hope in the knowledge that we are divine and eternal. He then added that he had a rather peculiar experience when he read the book. He told me that he got halfway through the book when he felt his eyes misting over with tears and he remembered something that he had forgotten. He remembered who he was. In one week, from Australia to California to Virginia, different people were experiencing a reconnection to their divine eternal natures and our real heavenly home, or as I call it in my book, our, our one true home. Angels of Faith and its message that death certainly is not the end has touched others and my life so profoundly that I cannot even fathom what would have happened if I had just plowed forth on my own agenda of writing and I had not taken the time to attend to God's agenda and truly listen 
to his voice by sending me his messenger through that little bird. You know, everyone, the funny thing about this is that the posse of angels is saying that these types of miracles are continuously happening all around us, and they are just waiting for us to be still enough to allow them to come in to affect our lives. But the majority of people are so busy, busy, busy lives, pushing and forcing and controlling life and getting on with their expected agendas and focusing on the big things to happen that they do not tune in to how that divine source wants us to bring forth and bless us with absolute gems of signs that contain magical messages along our life's path. You know, everyone, most people miss out on the miracles of life because they are small and seemingly insignificant, just like that little bird. Outwardly, they look like a diversion that is actually taking us off the path of fulfilling some expected agenda. You know what? But the funny thing about life is that the more we can let go of our limited plan and give our schedule over to God's agenda, then things will always work out in the most miraculous of ways. And the best part is that we don't have to wait for a holiday season to experience the mir uh, um, a miracle. The posse of angels, here they come. They're chiming in and saying that humans are under the misguided impression that life has to work out for us in straight lines. You know, if I would have completely ignored the little bird and not allowed for any disruptions as I stubbornly pursued working on that third book, the miracles ever occurred. Having lived my life these past 14 years since my angelic walk-in on January 11th, 2003, which by the way, I write about in my autobiography, I am an angelic walk-in. I do not stubbornly pursue my will. But I have said over and over again, I will to will God's will. Please show me how to be of best service and I will step forth. That's because God always has my best wishes at heart and I do not have to question that higher source. And each time that I have allowed this divine presence to guide me and show me how and when to step forward, I know that God is showing me the way to my next miracle. I have the faith and the trust of a child. And each time that I've taken that immediate inspired action to those signs and messages, I know that those miracles and that magic are on the other side of that. You know, some is the visible representation of seeing prayers in of a wish. And either next week or the week after, I can't remember, but there will be a whole show on wishing. And I have to say, people um, uh, put a great deal of effort on being rational and being logical and justifying things. But again, the presence of miracles is the visible representation of seeing prayers in action for all miracles start. The energy wish. And the more we focus and concentrate on our prayers and our wishes, then an alchemical process begins to constantly feed the energies to bring us the visible, tangible manifestation of those prayers. When it comes to miracles, never, ever, ever underestimate the power 
of your prayers. Several years ago, my husband had an elective surgery to repair some torn cartilage in his knee. And while it was a, well, a relatively minor surgery, it did entail general anesthetic and much care and attention. Uh, we arrived very early for the surgery and I entered the wait. Thank you everyone for listening listening to Angel Healing House Radio with Claire Candy Huff. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, everyone. You are back with Claire Candy Hoff and Angel Healing House Radio. So sorry about that. It is Mercury retrograde, and uh, gremlins do get in the system. And <laughs> for those last four minutes or so, uh, the uh, the Skype. Uh, decided to drop out, but we are back. We are back. I was just going to say that, um, uh, um, uh, just to end that, uh, the segment on miracles, uh, that putting our belief and faith on something that we cannot see, touch, taste, or hear is to believe in miracles and the faith and the power of God to intervene in our lives. Once we let go and once we surrender to being those children of that higher source, and being taken care of by, sh by him showing us those signs and messages, then we open to allow miracles to be part of our daily lives. Once again, uh, coming back from that break, if you're just joining us now, uh, my name is Claire Candy Hoff, and you're with Angel Healing House Radio. Let's go to some of those callers. Um, let's go to our first caller. Let's take um, Stephanie in New York. Stephanie, you're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff. How are you today? Okay, thanks. How are you? Um, good to Hello. hear your voice. It's really good to hear your voice because of those gremlins in the system. Uh, yeah, it just, uh, <laughs> it just uh, <laughs> uh, Skype just decided not to work. So, uh, so um, how have you been? Um, I've been pretty good. Uh, I did really like the doctor that I went to last week, so thank you. Um, oh, I'm so, so glad they led. They led you. Yeah. actually, you co you co created that uh, when we when we spoke about uh, you opening up to finding uh, a nice doctor, and uh, so the your angels uh, led you to a uh, to really nice fellow. That's good. Well, actually, it was a woman, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, good. Rem yeah, good remembering. Yeah, and I, I liked her. It was a good first visit. She didn't do the biopsy, so that's scheduled for another few weeks. Um, so I am still concerned about that, but I did like her. And I'm in the process of moving, so I'm a little nervous. Also, that you mentioned it's Mercury retrograde because I'm supposed to move on Friday. Although I still have so much, so much to pack, and I just found out that down the street on the, on my block, just like a block away, this uh, place open that has all these art classes of things that I particular have been wanting to learn and do. So I'm like, I'm having all these mixed feelings where I'm excited about moving, a little concerned I won't have everything ready by Friday morning, and then also now feeling like, oh, why am I, like, I'm leaving this place that's now becoming so much cooler. So I'm having lots of um, mixed feelings, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, also, also, Stephanie, you should know by now, having having um, had many conversations with the Posse of Angels, that things do always work out. They always work out. They may not work out um, as expected, but they do work out for our highest good. And a lot of times, I, I remember our, uh, our conversation not too long ago when you were worried about moving, whether you should or you shouldn't, um, different doctors. And if you look over the arc, certainly of the past year, so many things have fallen into place for you. And, um, and they want you to get excited and they want you to, instead of worrying, they want you to keep saying thank you. Thank you for this, you know, wonderful opportunity. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and you know what? You know what, angels? Thank you. 
thank you because I know that everything is going to work out uh, for my highest good. Um, and that's the energy. The, the fun thing about it is that's the energy that will keep, um, you know, keep you positive, keep you optimistic, all of those things, and, uh, and constantly feed that. Because, you know, worry really is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's symptomatic of us not having faith. It's, uh, it's symptomatic yeah. of us not believing in the, in the higher plan. And so, uh, so that's what they want you to really put emphasis on. Let me go to the cards. And, uh, okay. and I think, like, I've been wanting what? a place like that, so it manifested, but it just feels like it's too late. Because I'm leaving as it appears. <laughs> but. Oh. Okay, let me get to the you know what I mean? and see what comes up. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Oh, that one just that one just flipped over. Let me see what that one is. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's funny. That one just flipped over. That's the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is the Choices card. And they is said, the how... how it's it's the choice it's the choices card. Um, it's having having choices. We can only be presented with choices if we let go to what we expect, and and we're, and we say thank you, thank you for co-creating such a beautiful life for me and show me show me um, you know um, how things uh, are working out in the most divine way. Um, and that, and therefore we let, let go of our expectations and attachments. And then we open up for magic and miracles to appear in our lives. Uh, the next card for you that's coming out is the other uh, lovers card. <laughs> and they said, um, this, uh, this new move will help you and your boyfriend. Um, it will help both of you to be, uh, closer, it will help uh, both of you to uh, uh, to really like the area that you're living in, and um, it will present all kinds of lovely things happening for you. And the next one is uh, the ten of pentacles, ten of pentacles, which is the fa happy family life. So um, I hope that's been helpful to you, Stephanie. I I, yeah, I know yeah. I know that yeah. Coincidences go. So we went. They had their Christmas tree lighting at the at Sky Town last Friday night, and we went. And there were mm -hmm. children and dogs everywhere. And I was saying thank you, thank you. I was I was so happy. And then we ran into someone that Chris used to play soccer with 20 years ago who lives there. And so he has like a built-in friend who's just down the street. So I could see for sure how. Uh, it will be so much better for both of us too at the same time. So. It it will it will and it will continue to get better in 2018. So, God bless you. It was lovely speaking with you. Have a beautiful day. Take care, Stephanie. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. And that goes for all of us. Uh, God and the angels, that higher source, can't help us with. Uh, um, manifesting the life of our dreams or the life that will help our souls expand and grow uh, in extraordinary ways if we hang on to only the expectation of what our limited linear minds um, uh, can think about. And so when we we of course we have our wishes and of course we have our intentions um, but uh, but within that, uh, we have to allow for a lot of wiggle room for, for God and the angels to bring us the fulfillment of our prayers. Let's go to our next caller. We have Kay in California. Kay, you're on the line with myself, Claire Candy Huff, and Angel Healing House Radio. How are you today? Good, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Nice to nice to hear your voice. What's been going on in your life, Kay? I have a really hard time letting something go. Um, basically, um, my partner is um, he's settling, 
for um, a part-time job, and I'm having a really, really hard time dealing with that. And I just, uh, it's like, I know he, you know, he's providing his share, but he's pretty much limiting his his own um, finances because as long as he's providing his share, he that's what he's being content with. And it has something to do with his mother. Don't want to get too much into it, but I'm sure the angels know what's going on. And I just have such a hard time because when I wake up in the morning, um, even though he, you know, he does his share in the house and, you know, I mean, I, I, I try to be grateful for everything, but those mornings when it's like cold and I have to get up and go to work and it, it just bothers me. And I just, you know, I have a, a bad morning sometimes because of that. Oh, well, um, a lot of what you feel, thank, and thank you so much for sharing that with, with uh, us, Kay. So let me just keep this straight. The line dropped out a little bit. Your partner is settling for less because you feel that he's settling for a part-time job. Correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, okay. And, uh, and he's, he's, pro- he, he is providing for, uh, support. Um, for both of you? Yes, he's pretty much has his, he's putting in his share, but he's content with that. Like, that's, that's what he wants to do. And I'm like, it's very frustrating because there's no okay. margin. Okay. Uh, now, the, the big word here is that he is content with that. This, this has nothing to do with you. I know that, but it, it, it frustrates I, me. I know, I know. And, but it's your expectation and your attachment to what he should be doing that is, that is um, making you feel this way. It's not what he's doing. It's your expectation and attachment. So the positive angels are saying, my dear, <laughs> that's their words, my dear, my dear Kay, you have to make choices. One, is that you can put up with this. Two, is that you can have a heart-to-heart and say, I feel, since I I, I would, uh, I'm assuming you bring in more money than he does? Yes. Okay. Um, I I feel uh, that uh, uh, diminished because you're not bringing in enough money and then... um, uh, there must, uh, you know, uh, and just tell him how you feel. I don't know if you've done that. And the third one is that this is, uh, that the, this is a deal breaker and that this is the end of the relationship. Now, the posse of angels would never tell anybody to go or to stay or because that's, the, that's a person's free will. But there are only these three choices. But what they do want you to know, Kay, that he's not doing anything. He... In fact, in fact, he is content. He is content with this. And again, it's your expectation and attachment to what he should be doing that is causing you to feel this way. So when you really look at right. it, you do, have, you do have a course of action. Um, you can also be content with how things are. Maybe he has to be at this part-time job in order for, uh, maybe he's followed his intuition um, to be at this part-time job because he meets somebody then, then who will then employ him in full-time work. We never know what the path is for somebody else. Perhaps he needed to, uh, t- you, you use the word settling, Perhaps he needed to take this part-time job because he was exhausted. Maybe he was burnt out. And maybe this will help him rejuvenate and recharge himself so that he can be a better partner for you. Um, It's hard to know the path of somebody else. But I do know that uh, the more that you put your emphasis on what he should be doing, the more that you will feel like you're missing out. 
and you do have three courses of action, as they said. Um, and until you actually sit to, I don't know, if you, have you voiced this conversation with him? That should be too much. Excuse me? Possibly too much. <laughs> Oh, possibly too much because um, because if we if we uh, are he, you know heated and if we're upset um, and it leads to argument argue, uh, arguing and arguments uh, then it's hard to it's hard to then communicate with someone because we feel uh, you know we allow ourselves to feel wounded you know if he loved me he would be making more money if he if he cared about the relationship then he would be contributing more, which is not only, which is our dialogue inside of our heads. So they would, they would really um, like you to look at those three possibilities. Is this a deal breaker? Is this a deal breaker or do you bless the other person? And these are all things which they cannot tell you because uh, it's, it's your past and, um, they, they, they might even suggest that you uh, get to the stage where you, are, where you are content with this. Where you can even say, I can't figure this out, so I'm going to surrender it and I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to bless the other person. Bless the other person for teaching me tolerance and patience for somebody who would choose to take a part-time job rather than full employment. Let's go to the cards and see what comes out for a lovely K. Okay. One, two, three. A first card that comes out for you is the, oh, it's the page of wands. Um, it's interesting that I said that, uh, it, that, that being at this part-time job might bring him, um, uh, might uh, connect him with people and opportunities to find other full-time employment um, because this is a card about messages surrounding his career. So um, when we're content, we feel abundant. When we're abundant, we're open to receive. And when we're open to receive, then the universe, God and the angels, can then answer our prayers and our intentions by sending us opportunities and connections. When we are not content with something, you know, and we try to force and control it, then we are rigid and we constrict ourselves from opening to receive the way that the universe wants us to receive. So this is actually uh, a confirmation of a message that I brought forth about him connecting with people. Now, whether he chooses to take on full-time responsibility, again, that's his, um, that's his free choice. The next card is the world card. Um, and uh, as, he, as he is beginning something, the world card is about completions and beginnings. So um, this, well, this uh, part-time job is a beginning, but it will lead to something else they're saying. Now, it might lead to another part-time job or another opportunity for him. But uh, where we are is never the end point. It's only a stop on our journey through life. And the next, uh, <laughs> the next card is the nightmare card. The nine of swords is the worry card, is the stressing card, is the card of a lot of tension and worry, and this is all self-created. So they want you to take time out to bless the situation, to thank, uh, thank the universe for a lovely partner that does want to contribute to the relationship. Um, it's not as if he's sitting at home doing nothing. He is contributing to the relationship, and the more that you bless this and the more that you, you see it from a divine aspect, you, the more you will be open to receive, Kay. So I hope that's been helpful for you. 
Yes, thank you very much. Appreciate that. You're very welcome. Take care. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you. You too. And and thank you. And that goes for all of us. Oh my gosh. How many times do we really get our knickers in a twist? Excuse the expression. Because we think that another person has to act a certain way. They should be acting this way. It's our expectation of how another person should act or what they should be doing and not their act that often gets us all twisted and, uh, and, and full of worry and tension. So um, the more we bless the situation and bless that person, um, then, uh, then we become more abundant. Let's go to our next caller. Let's go to Beth in California. Beth, you're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff. How are you? Hello? Hello, Beth. Are you there? I'm here. I didn't. There was a I'm blackout. So gla- I didn't I'm that. so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so glad you're there. Uh, we've had gremlins in the system today, and uh, oh my God. Uh, good old Mercury retrograde. <laughs> and this wind so is does so, to be so hard. Yeah, the wind isn't doing any helping either. So. No, that's true. Can you hear and me? we have all. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Okay. We also uh, are contending. We are we are also contending with uh, with uh, smoke from the fires um, up in Ventura. Uh, I think that's called the Thomas Fire, and uh, and I just uh, am sending out prayers and wishes of people in the the north of Los Angeles, about uh, uh, yeah. two hours, three hours north, to uh, to keep those people yeah. safe and to wrap them yeah, in the golden wind is, light. The wind is- Oh, sorry. The wind is pretty bad, so, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so, do you, do you have a question? <laughs> yes. Um, I, I've really been working so diligently on healing my gut, and I just, it's just, I'm just not getting it over the goal line, and, I'm, and that's the miracle I'm looking for, and I'm curious if this me- medical medium I'm going to go to is going to be able to help me with my gut. Okay. Uh, let me ask the Posse of Angels, will the medical medium help in healing her stomach? Um, I'm hearing a resounding yes. Um, and and this, yay, yay. This will provide um, the piece of the, they're saying this will provide the piece of the puzzle that wasn't readily seen before. And they're saying the only reason that you were led to this medical medium is because of all the diligent work that you have done in healing your stomach. Um, they're showing me like a, a, like a stomach healing marathon that you've been racing <laughs> in. Uh, it's, like you're, it's like you're so exhausted after years and years and years of um, uh, eating uh, healthfully in changing your diet, but not only in changing your diet, changing your uh, emotional patterns uh, to be more loving, to be more um, uh, abundant, to be more blessing, to be more tolerant and accepting and forgiving, all of those things. And for loving yourself. Oh, my gosh. You know, they're saying, they're showing me like a recipe that somebody would prepare a cake. And they're saying, beloved Beth, what you have done is you've taken the recipe of eating better and only putting these beautiful ingredients in your cake and taking these beautiful emotions and putting them in your cake. And then the last bit of the ingredient was loving yourself enough to, uh, to then make all of the ingredients come together. Um, and then they're saying, as a result of this, uh, oh, I love what they're saying here. They're saying, of course, of course this, uh, this uh, piece of the puzzle had to come to you because you're going to be very busy. You've got lots of work to do for the, for the, uh, for the light. 
and they're saying, uh, you know, you, you're not ready to retire yet. There's still so many <laughs> things uh, with your gifts that you will be sharing with others and you will be at your optimum health. So they're saying, yes, this is um, that piece of the puzzle that's going to help with the healing of your stomach. Let's go to the cards. Oh, I just got tickles all over me. Isn't that lovely? They love Yay. that. They love that you, they love that you're honoring and respecting yourself. Okay, so, oh, four of wands. It's the celebration card. But there are several celebration cards in the tarot. And, uh, and I'd like the three of cups celebrating with friends or celebrating uh, uh, like an anniversary or a birthday. But this card in particular has to do with celebrating hard work. And they're bowing to you and they're saying, you have put in the hard work and now the celebration happens. Next card that comes out for you is the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is the spiritual teacher. And they're saying that you will now go on to help others because you're going to share with them what you did to heal your gut and to bring your health back. Um, and this is going to help so many people. Oh my gosh, you know, out of, out of so many countries in the world, America is, you know, everything is the yo-yo dieting and, and diet foods and, and, and people, you know, keep on uh, going on this treadmill of running after their health. Um, and you're going to be helping so many as that spiritual teacher. And the next card that's coming out for you um, is the Ten of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles is, again, that happy family. That happy family. Um, and there's great abundance that's going to come. Not only financial abundance that's going to come from you sharing this amazing story of the journey that you've been on to heal yourself. But... Um, uh, but it's going to be quite financially um, abundant for you as well. So great cards um, and uh, and great reading. So hope that's been helpful. Oh, yes, it's really been helpful because I woke up this morning feeling a little bit overwhelmed and sad about my stomach. So to know that um, in the next couple of weeks when I see this woman that I'll be heading in in a better direction. <laughs> Makes me feel Absolutely, much to know and, that. and and and, and also choices. because now now that you have come full circle, and now that you've put to peace so many other emotional things, um, in tolerance and acceptance and forgiveness, now that meeting with the medical medium, it will you were you're completely open to receive now. The, the information and what will happen during that. So I'm so happy for you. God bless you, Beth. You too. Love you dearly. Love you so much. Take care. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. You too, Angel. And thank you. And that's just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you to all the callers and listeners for tuning into the program. Thank you for those little Mercury uh, retrograde gremlins for coming in because uh, if those things didn't happen in our life, like the show dropping out, uh, then uh, a lot of times we wouldn't be grateful and appreciative for things running smoothly most of the time. Thank you to my producer, Justin, for getting me back on track on my phone. And I have so much to be grateful for. Again, if you're looking for holiday gifts, please do go on my website, angelhealinghouse.com, uh, to give those extraordinary channeled books that uplift, that enlighten, that inspire others with uh, wonderful, wonderful spiritual knowledge and, uh, and beautiful stories to boot. So take care of yourself, everyone. And until next time, do allow your radiant light to shine forth and to go out and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. Love, and as always, angel blessings, and I can't wait to speak with you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.
Thank you.